format of my daily vlogs. I share my exercise, answer questions from the previous day's vlogs, and I talk about whatever topic that I wanna to talk about for the day. So feel free to use the timestamps below as you see fit. Exercise for the day. Today is actually day one of my July calendar club challenge in which I will be running the number of miles on the respective day of the month. So July 1st, run one. July 31st, run 31 and everything else in between. So I'm gonna throw the map of my one mile run up here splits up here and actually after my one mile run i did an additional two miles so i'm going to throw the map of that run up here splits up here and i did an additional two miles just because if you add up all the miles from 1 to 31 for the month of july it actually only adds up to 496 and there will likely not be another time for a long time at least that i will get close to 500 total miles for the month so it's actually July calendar club challenge plus four miles for a total of 500 miles. So I did an additional two miles today and then I have two more miles to add. I'll probably do an additional one tomorrow. So tomorrow I'll probably run three and then I'll have one mile to make up sometime in between days three to 31. So that is the game plan. And actually before the run, I did some pull-ups, ended up doing body weight times five sets of 20 reps per set. And my back actually isn't even sore like at all. From yesterday's pull-ups, I did body weight times 16 sets of 15 reps per set. And like, I feel pretty good. My back is getting strong and I definitely need to make up some pull-ups because I also have a goal for the year uh, to do 36,600 pull-ups, which is an average of 100 pull-up per day. And I haven't added up the pull-ups in a while, though I know I'm pretty close. What really helped catch me up was that 1,000 pull-ups that I did for my 1,000 subscribers last Monday. So I think I should be pretty close in terms of being on track for my pull-ups for the year. And before the pull-ups, I actually decided to max out on my bench press as well, just because I likely won't be doing any sort of power lifting in the month of July, especially the last few weeks. So I want to test my overall strength and I'm back in the two plate club. I'm going to throw the clip right here. Let's get to some questions. First question comes from Hooded Hill Hopper. He asked, what did you do immediately after your 100 mile run? Before I answer that question, I'm gonna give you a little story of what happened to me around mile 70 to mile 80. So I did the 100 miler self-supported. When it's completely pitched back, I like to run around my neighborhood. It's about a 0.5 to a 0.6 mile loop. And when it's during the day, I usually like to run around the lake slash park. So, Right around mile 70, I was running around the lake slash park. It was getting dark. So I decided to go back to the neighborhood. As I was walking back to the neighborhood with my girlfriend, I looked down and the surface that I'm walking slash running on is gravel. And at that point, I'm completely out of it. I'm tired. At that point, I think I had been up 24 hours or so, or maybe a little bit less than that, but somewhere around there. And I look down, I'm talking to my girlfriend, and I say to her, doesn't the ground look like hieroglyphics? And I could literally see shapes of a hieroglyphics like you would see in Egyptian temples or pyramids. Vividly, I could see these shapes forming. And I really didn't like think anything of it. It was only after that I came home the next day and she was like, did you even know what you were saying yesterday to me? And I was like, I don't, what are you talking about? I said there were hieroglyphics. What's, what's wrong about that? And then she was like, I think you were hallucinating. And I was like, oh yeah, I was. So running 100 miles will cause hallucinations. And back to the original question of what I did right after my 100 mile run. My parents actually came out to support me the last 50 miles. They walked with me, they ran with me, and they made sure to stay until I finished. I ended up finishing pretty late, around 11.30 to midnight. 
and I knew that they still had to drive home. So I finished 100 miles on Strava and I showed them, hey, I'm done. But midday, I knew that Strava glitched out on me because it added an additional one mile when I hopped like a certain part of the trail so that I can talk to my parents. It was like in the parking lot and I knew it added a little bit less than a mile. So I was like, ah, I got to finish that right after though. I felt bad because my parents still had to drive home and it was already really, really late. So when they ended up leaving, I went out, ran another mile, came back. My girlfriend picked up Carl's Jr. and I ate a Beyond Burger. Sweeney Challenge asks, have you ever or do you ever intend on competing in a powerlifting meet? No, I've never competed in an official powerlifting meet. And the biggest factor for me not competing actually is just the cost. I feel like it's a waste of money just because I have to pay for the meet, one. And then two, a lot of the meets require me to have USA powerlifting certificate or membership or whatever it is. So I really just don't want to pay for the both of those because I feel like it's a waste of money. And if I get my lifts on camera, that is proof enough for me to have a PR. I don't need an official meet to tell me what I can lift or to tell me my PRs. Karina asks, when is the best time for you to work out? For me personally, I really like to work out in the morning right after I wake up. I'll have my coffee, I'll have my bagel, and then I'll go out on a run. If I'm not going out on a run, I'll just do a barbell session in my garage or when the gyms are open, I like to go to the gym to work out because I feel like it starts my day off right. Hyperfit TV asks, how do you always come up with topics to center the video around on such a regular basis? Honestly, most of the time, I don't know what I'm going to talk about until I start filming. And it's literally whatever I'm thinking about at that very moment. I might draw inspiration from a comment. I might draw inspiration from things around me, like my bookshelf. Like if I just ordered a multivitamin off Amazon, I might talk about that. Or a lot of times, if I already have a pre-planned idea of what I'm going to talk about, it usually comes when I'm running. When I'm running, it's my space to think. It's my creative space. And I'll just jot it down in my phone, and then I'll talk about it for the day's vlog. Kelly asks, how long have you been training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? I started training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in San Diego, the end of March, early April, 2018. And I actually got promoted to blue belt September, 2019. So it took me about a year and a half to get my blue belt. And I haven't been on the mats for about four months now due to COVID. The Fit Rush asks, do you have any blister issues while running? If so, how do you overcome that? Personally, I don't have any issues about blistering, though I have calluses. And my calluses, I really don't do anything about them because they're not that bad. I feel like they just come with the territory. If they get bad, I'll just use callus remover. I've had to use callus remover in the past, and really it's not that big of a deal. For your blisters, it could be a multitude of things. I would definitely consult a doctor, though, if it were me, I would probably switch out my shoes. It probably has something to do with your shoes as far as if it's too wide or too narrow. And you can also put in insoles. Try that. Edgar asks, do you play any team sports? No, I don't play any team sports, nor have I ever. The only thing that maybe count as a team sport is I ran track and cross country in high school, though really you're just running by yourself but the points are added up so team sport or not i don't know and to be honest with you i am not a very coordinated person that's why i run that's why i lift weights and that's why i'm good at those things because it takes little to no coordination davis asks when did you start reading self-help and entrepreneurial books i started reading them right around the same time that I started my fitness journey in 2014, 2015, because I thought to myself, well, I got to train the body, but I also got to train the brain as well, because I will not only want a six pack on my body, I want a six pack up here. And the first book that I ever read cover to cover for fun was Malcolm Gladwell's Outliers. That book taught me so much especially and you've probably heard it the 10,000 hour rule it takes 10,000 hours of deliberate practice to become a master in that subject augie silver fitness asks where do you think you'll be in 10 years this is a very 
tough question because honestly, I don't know. It's really hard for me to look that far into the future. Though, I guess if I had to say something, I would definitely want to have collected a bunch of those 100 mile belt buckles. Each time you finish a 100 miler, you get a belt buckle. I hope to have a collage of them and then put them up on my wall as decorations. And in terms of my career, I see myself deep in business. I see myself owning my own business, whether if that's a brokerage or still being an agent and really expanding my family's business. So lately I've really been thinking about the idea of surrounding myself with the right people to get me to the next level or the whole thing of you are the average of the five to seven people that you hang out with most or really just surrounding myself with like-minded individuals who are on the same path so that you can feed off of each other's energy. In particular, how do you get there or how do you surround yourself with those types of people if you don't currently have them around you? And actually over the past few months, I found myself lucky enough to be in a situation where I personally think that I've surrounded myself with the right people. So I wanted to share with you all just my thoughts and my personal experience of how this came to be. The first thing is you can't be afraid to be that person to first extend their hand, to start that friendship, to start that conversation. Because if two people don't really know each other, how do they become friends? One person has to extend their hand out and start that conversation. I'll give you a great example. You probably already know him, Dimitri. I was on his podcast, the Rise Productive Podcast. He is a podcaster, he is a runner, he is a beast, he is a YouTuber, and overall, a good human being. We actually connected through YouTube comments and we added each other, subscribed to each other, supported each other. We ended up adding each other on Instagram. And after we had each other on Instagram, he sent me a message and was like, hey, I love what you're doing with your channel. And we just got to talking a little bit. And next thing you know, we're Instagram messaging back and forth pretty frequently, especially about analytics. He's asking me my take on things. I'm asking him his take on things. And then we exchange numbers. And now we're actually on a daily texting basis. And he is kind of my like, counterpart to this whole YouTube journey. Anytime I have a question on YouTube, because he's right around the same subscriber count, he's right around the same boat. I really enjoy his channel, everything that he's about. And anytime I have any questions, I always go to him first. And he'll come to me with questions. And really, it's just this good, cohesive mastermind, it feels like. We're working with each other. We want to see each other grow. We give each other good feedback and this wouldn't have started if he didn't extend that hand out first. Second point, if you find it a little difficult to find like-minded individuals, who says that you can't be that focal point? You can't be that person that starts it and to have people gravitate around you. For me, I've really tried to build my personal brand, not just on YouTube, but Instagram, Facebook, and I post daily on all three. And I've started to notice that people have been gravitating towards me and I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything like that. Though I really think that my personal brand, it's starting to really build itself and people can see that I'm genuine. People can see that I'm a grinder and I can feel people's energy and they've been reaching out to me. I'll give you a great example. Rosser Runs, he is an ultra runner as well. He reached out to me and we actually talk on a pretty decent basis. It's not a day-to-day -day basis, though if he has any questions about YouTube, about running, or just my take on things, he'll ask me. And the same thing, if I have any questions, I'll ask him and his take on certain things. So don't be afraid to be that person to start it all. So thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed that video. Please give this video a thumbs up. It really helped me out. If you have any comments, let me know down below. If you want to catch another one of my videos, there's a video right here. There's a video right here. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button right here. See you all tomorrow.